I really, I, I'm really questioning some of the Bible stories. And I think some of that stuff in the Bible is, tr is set up to train black people to be submissive to systematic racism and white supremacy. That I believe. <laughs> What's up guys, Alton here, another video. Today we're going to be talking about Ricky Smiley. And he was on Vlad TV talking about the Bible and how he thinks that it's just racist and how he believes white supremacy. It was constructed for white supremacy and how you don't believe everything in the Bible. As you guys just heard in that clip. So we're going to break this video down. Now I do want to put this disclaimer out here. Um, Vlad may strike this video. And they may end up removing it from YouTube, but if they do do it, then I'll turn around and I'll make another video, but I'll try to just keep it maybe, you know, as short as possible. I just won't use any of their clips. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get right into this video. And like I said, as you just heard, now if, first of all, I'm just going to start from, from this point. If you don't know who Ricky Smiley is, he is a comedian, as, as you heard Vlad say, he has been known as a clean comedian because he really didn't put that many curse, curse words in his acts or in his shows and he's always been known to do things like you know make little jokes about the church nothing bad you know just little things that you may notice that that happens in church the predominantly black uh you know churches and stuff like that some of that stuff i used to find kind of funny because when you're looking at culture and you're looking at people's traditions and stuff like that you know it could be a little comical but now he's totally on this thing to where I guess the culture has influenced him to think or to believe that now the Bible is somehow this racist machine and it's this thing that was constructed for white supremacy and control of black people and slavery and all of that stuff. You know, just the basic talking points that you will hear from a lot of, you know, so-called pro-black people nowadays. And one of the things that we're starting to see is a lot of black people reject the Bible. What makes this video so interesting is because Ricky Smiley uses the church as an audience. So for you to use the church as an audience and then turn around and try to bash the Bible, it's like how do you it's like how do you put two and two together? Like like how do you use the Bible on one hand to get an audience, but then on the other hand, you want to bash the Bible. You see what I'm saying? So these are some of the things that we have to look out for in the church. And we, we just have to address things like this when whenever it comes our way, like I'm doing now. So let's just go ahead and get into the video. That explain, I definitely, explain you know, that. Turn the other cheek or whatever. People don't mess with nobody that fight back. People do not mess with nobody that fight back. Black people have been taught to forgive and turn the other cheek for 400 years. And what have what, what has changed? Nothing. Actually, a lot has changed for uh, black people from 400 years ago till now, um, even the, the past 200 years since black people have not been enslaved. So with Ricky Smiley saying that, that is actually a false statement that he's making. Uh, talking about that, you know, what have we gotten? Well, first of all, if it wasn't for the Christian abolitionists, both black and white, you know, you forget about people like Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, you know, Nat Turner, black people who fought for the freedom of slaves. People were taught to turn the other cheek, and that was a commandment by Christ because he was basically letting them know that if that's all you can do to me, but you can't stop my salvation then of course I'll give you the other cheek. If you think that you're really affecting my salvation, you know, if you think that you're you're just going to persecute me because I'm spreading truth and you think that you're actually doing something, it's like, no, let me show you how much that you're affecting me. So if you strike me on one, on one side of my face, I'm going to go ahead and I'll give you the other one. Why don't you go ahead and take this one too? Because you can't stop the destiny that God has put in front of me. And you would think that a guy like Ricky Smiley who always panders to the church would actually know something like that but again this is what happens when people don't read their bibles nothing well i mean the the bible and the church were used as a means of control i believe that times. i really believe that well the first black uh aristocracy was the preachers right uh probably right i mean the preachers were given more power 
during slavery times because they kept the blacks in line and they were given certain, you know, extra. I totally, I totally believe that. Okay, now what's so interesting is that he says that he believes that, but he's all up on these other pastors and preachers, you know, talking about, oh, you know, how God saved me, and oh, if it wasn't for the Lord, and if it wasn't for his word, and I wouldn't be where I'm at today, I got shot and almost died, and you know, now all of a sudden he want to bash the Bible, you know, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and play uh, a clip with him and Pastor Dewey Smith, who I just did a video on, but I'm not going to play it right now. I'm going to play that a little bit later in the video, so you guys stay tuned for that. But let's just go ahead and, and finish continuing to address this clip. Totally. Yeah, no, no. And, and, yeah, I, and, and, and you have it to this day because you see all these black preachers that were sitting around Donald Trump uh, two weeks ago, same thing. What's the difference between that? And remember now, now, first of all, I want to go ahead and stop right there because a lot of times people like to try to play the, the, the politics game, right? And what's happening is, for those who probably don't know, who don't understand, Donald Trump met with some black pastors at the White House to talk about the issues that are going on in the black community. Now, I can go off on a tangent on that. I got my own thoughts and views about that, but I'm not going to do that in this video. You know, if you guys request for me to do my thoughts about that, I might do a video. But anyway, I'm not going to go into that. But point blank, period. Donald Trump reached out to a bunch of pastors, black pastors. Now, a lot of these guys, probably all of these guys, I don't agree with them theologically. Some of them, I don't even know who they are. Never heard of them. A lot of these pastors that showed up, a couple that I recognized were of the Word of Faith type movement. One guy who was there sitting right next to Donald Trump was John Gray. Um, I don't like John Gray personally as a pastor. I, I really think that he's a heretic and I think that he's one of those guys that he does a lot of bashing to his own members and I can't get down with someone who's always constantly talking bad about his own members whenever he gets in front of the camera and when he, whenever he gets in front of the secular media. So that's my personal opinion about John Gray. But other than that, those people were there because they wanted to try to come to a solution to combat all of the stuff that's going on in the black community. George W. Bush, only thing they need, only thing Donald Trump need is 8%, 8% of the black vote in order to get reelected. George Bush needed 10 and he got it because he went around and he got all those black preachers to preach abortion and gay marriage sermons, which got black Christians in an uproar and 10% of them voted for George W. Bush that pushed him over the top to become reelected against John Kerry in 2004. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and they're being used now. You know, Donald Trump is promoting racism and uh, uh, so the white nationalists and, and all that stuff. And I, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be no reason for me to sit at the table and talk to him about anything. Because once, once you identify yourself as a racist and a white supremacist, it's nothing to talk about. Now, here's the thing. Okay. Now, I understand that, that you don't want to deal with the president or if you have your own views about him. You know, I get that. I understand. Um, not saying that I agree with what he's saying right there. Um, but I do say that, you know, people have their views politically. But if a person is trying to reach out to you to say that there's a problem in the black community and you recognize that there's a problem in the black community and I have the power to help solve these issues that are going on, but I'm going to reach out to you because you're more connected. You're telling me that you're not going to sit down and talk to anyone about trying to correct what's going on in the black community, which you agree that is happening there. You see what I'm saying? So that is kind of a bigoted mentality. And if he's supposed to be a follower of Christ, that's not showing any fruits of the spirit. He has no fruits of the spirit. I mean, he's letting... His blackness and his political views drive him. Those things are his God. His skin color is his God. He don't worship the, the, the almighty God of the Bible like he claims he does when he's trying to pander to the, to, to the church. He's only trying to get into the church so he can go ahead and make money off of them. But l let's continue the video. Well, you know, me and D.L. Hughley talked about this because he's friends with Steve Harvey, but he didn't agree with Harvey's decision to go meet with Trump. 
and he and, felt and, that, and that neither Trump, did I. Yeah, he felt that Trump uses black people for optics. Absolutely. And that's the same thing that people like him do. So you want to agree that Trump used black people for optics? You're doing the same thing. And people got mad at Steve Harvey because he actually went and sat down with the president after the president reached out to him and said, hey, you know, I want to talk to you and see what we can do about changing the black community. And Steve Harvey got so much backlash over that. And now you got this guy, Ricky Smiley, who I believe is hating on the man because he's so influential across the spectrum. Not not just in black homes, but he's influential in white homes as well. And I believe that people like him and D.L. Hughley, they hate on him because they were both at the same point at one, at one time. So they saw him rise to where... He had his own uh, midday talk show. He got his own radio show. He's on Family Feud, you know, and I mean, he's doing so much. And I think he has some, some type of talent show or something going on at one point. So he's being broadcast to millions. And these guys are only maybe getting 100,000 people to, to watch and listen to them. They're upset. And I believe that they're hating. But anyway, besides all of that, let's, let's just go ahead and wrap this video up. Uh, because the rest of this, they're going to be talking about Steve Harvey. So I'm just going to play a little bit more of this video and uh, we're just going to wrap this up. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I didn't agree with the, you know, the decision either, which it has nothing to do with the respect that I have for Steve as a mentor and a big brother and a frat brother, you know, and a best friend or whatever, you know, uh, we're just not going to agree on everything. Uh, but, you know, I, I think Steve went with good intentions or whatever, but he probably didn't know at the time what he was dealing with. And I'm sure if he had to do that all over again, he definitely wouldn't. I mean, did you have a conversation with him afterwards? Huh? Did you have a conversation with Steve about the Trump thing afterwards? The answer is no. He did not. He didn't even reach out to the man. And what does the Bible teach us? The Bible teaches us that if we have a problem with our brother, we go and we see that man immediately. We go and we talk to him. And before we even sacrifice to give any type of offering to anyone or, or to God, then we need to go make amends with our brother. So this is why, you know, we have to, as people in the church, as Christians, if we call ourselves Christians, we got to read that Bible. We got to know what's in it. We got to know what our actions are. We got to know what our, what our responses are when it comes to certain situations. And this guy, Ricky Smiley, like I said, you know, he only uses black people so he can get more money in his pocket. He doesn't care about he doesn't care about these ministers or the congregations that he go and he sits in front of and panders to. He only cares about lining his pockets. And what has happened is that Ricky Smiley has this nighttime TV show that comes on, but, it, but it's actually a radio show that he has, and I guess they just kind of recap things. And they play it on at night, I think around like 11 o'clock, I think it's called Dish Nation or Dish Network or something like that. And that's what he's on right now. And he's making a little bit of money from that, so I guess he's just kind of like, well, you know, I'm nationally syndicated now, so I don't need to really pander to the black church anymore. I don't need to pander to the church or Christians or anything because I'm already making enough money. I'm good. And this is what a lot of people do. They want to cater to the black church and they want to try to make it seem like they're just so Christian and oh, you know, I was with God and God saved me. But then as soon as they get a little money, then they're gone. You know, now it's, oh, well, you know, the, the, the Bible did this to me and, and, and people who was, you know, people in church hurt me so bad and God was never there when I called on him. And now that I went out and got all of this money, now I don't need God. Now I don't need the Bible. Now I don't need the church. But anyway, guys, that's the video. And like I said, don't be surprised if this video get copyright strucken or stricken. <laughs> because they might strike this video. Uh, if they don't, I'll be surprised. But I'm hoping that they don't because I really do want to get this message out. So if you guys would, like, rate, share, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down if you want. If you guys think that I'm off, let me know in the comment section below. If you think that I'm on point, let me know in the comment section below. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video, and uh, you guys have a blessed day.